curiously named Suez Motel was to provide the inspiration. We were staying at the Suez Motel, which was our headquarters when we were in South Florida. The price was right, the location wasn't bad, and they didn't interfere with anything we did. We were the crazy film people. And I was actively looking for some sort of subject matter, the magic formula, the kind of movie that the major companies either couldn't make or wouldn't make. And we'd made a list of subjects that were exploitable, subjects that the majors wouldn't touch, subjects that were in bad taste. And we knew that that, that would work. And I had seen a movie there uh, in, in Miami somewhere that was filled with violence, and yet the people in it died peacefully. Eyes closed, half smile on the lips, a tiny unobtrusive red hole where there should have been a gouts of blood as we used in our campaigns. And I was complaining to somebody about the, uh, the lack of realism in that, and in mid-sentence I stopped Archimedes in the bathtub, Eureka, I found it, gore. Gore. I turned to go back into the motel to start putting notes together, and there confronting me was this fake Sphinx. The Sphinx and I exchanged a meaningful glance, and Blood Feast was born. Blood Feast was filmed in just nine days and cost less than $20,000. Its crude and basic film technique was matched only by its senseless and graphic bloodletting a combination that gave birth to a brand new film genre, the gore movie. Blood Feast, like all of my movies, uh, was something of a, of a caricature. That's why I find it so amusing that the latter-day saints of our business, one, attribute to me motives that just weren't there, and two, accuse me of corrupting morality, uh, which I wish I had the power to do. But that's how Blood Feast came to be. Now, in Blood Feast, as in some of your other early films, the acting is, I think, best described perhaps as primitive. Um, did it bother I you? I think that's a euphemism. Good day. Are you Mr. Ramsey's? I'm Dorothy Fremont. A woman goes into an exotic caterer, and it says, Fuad Ramsey's. She said, I want to have a party for my daughter. Has there been another party like this? Madam, have you ever had an Egyptian feast? Well, no, but has there been a party like this? Not four to five thousand years. Have you ever had an Egyptian feast? Why, that would be fine. That would be perfect. It has not been served for five thousand years. Mrs. Fremont. At that point, the audience certainly understands two things. One, something just dreadful is going to happen. <laughs> Number two, yes, dreadful acting has already happened, but they don't care. That isn't the purpose of this film. And number three, they are not going to be cheated by the kind of effects they've come to see. A blood feast that would give the goddess to the people. The young priestesses would be slaughtered on the great altar. Their blood would be caught in silver bowls as it ran from their bodies. Then certain organs and limbs would be removed and prepared as dishes to serve the people. As the last morsel of this horrible feast was eaten, the high priestess would show herself rising from the tomb, a living incarnation of Ishtar. Ishtar, arisen in flesh and blood, had become part of the people. those days to marketing a low-budget film was the trailer, the coming attraction. We had uh, Rooney Kerwin standing tight on, on camera, looking in, into the camera, and the, ladies and gentlemen. You're about to witness some scenes from the next attraction to play this theater. This picture, truly one of the most unusual ever filmed, contains scenes which under no circumstances 
should be viewed by anyone with a heart condition or anyone who is easily upset. We urgently recommend that if you are such a person or the parent of a young or impressionable child now in attendance, that you leave this auditorium for the next 90 seconds, figuring if that didn't keep them there, nothing would. <laughs> Everybody that came in the theater got a throw up that. And then they did other things like they had girls dressed as nurses sitting in the lobby with little kits, you know, in case anybody got sick. Rooney Kerwin starred in many of Herschel's movies, as well as occasionally supplying the special effects. I took him back for a nostalgic stroll through the Suez Motel, where he pointed out a few of the more interesting spots. We cut the girls' uh, brains out out here in the beach and blood feast. And uh, we used different rooms, like up in here, for uh, tearing the girl's tongue out of her head in blood feast. And every time we came down to do a film, whether it was a nudie or if it was a blood film, we came here because we got rooms inexpensive. Herschel's grim music holds the horror highlight of the movie, what fans gleefully refer to as the tongue scene. No one who has seen it in its full uncensored form will forget it. We offer you just a glimpse. Then he starts this way. And then they intercut to him, looking like he's... And then they cut to it, and it's like this one. And of course, she's gagging like hell. And, uh, and then he goes to jerk it out. I went over here to this restaurant, and I got a jar of uh, jam, strawberry jam, very heavy. And uh, that's what she spits out, is the blood and the strawberry jam with chunks in it, with the strawberries. So when he finally goes, Shh. if you look at that shot, the tongue's but no tongue's at all. It was a tongue from a lamb. The shock worked in them so much because you couldn't believe you were seeing people eating hearts and ripping out guts. But no one had done that. So it was a first. Herschel delivered. He gave what he promised. And he gave it in such a way with a sense of humor, which was very important for these sort of films, and with a great deal of sort of savage imagination. An imagination that invented scenes far more gruesome than had ever been filmed before. Scenes like this, for example, where the mad Egyptian is cooking a human leg. But although the film was certainly gory, Herschel and his partner had no way of knowing if it would be successful. We negotiated a, a, an opening in a town called Peoria, feeling that if we died in Peoria, who would even know about it? It's in the Midwest somewhere. It's in the Midwest. It's in Illinois between Chicago and St. Louis. We opened the picture on a Friday night, and, we, and Dave Friedman and I took the vow we were not going anywhere near Peoria. By Saturday, we couldn't stand it. So we got in our car and drove down to Peoria, and about 10 miles, before we got to the theater, there was a traffic jam. And the traffic jam continued all the way to the theater. We realized then that we knew, we knew uh, that we had something going. And on the drive back from Peoria that night, we started thinking about what the next blood, uh, blood epic was going to be. The enormous success of Blood Feast, especially at drive-ins and in the South, encouraged Herschel and producer Dave Friedman to make another gore film. 2,000 Maniacs. You're all invited to a centennial celebration. What they were celebrating wasn't important, and it sounded like a heap of fun until 2,000 maniacs crazed for carnage started bathing an entire town in pulsing human blood. You'll see six young strangers doomed to slaughter by an ancient curse. And from his lips there came an awful sound. And from his lips there came an awful sound. You know the story of Brigadoon. This is a bloody Brigadoon. A hundred years before, a group of Union soldiers had come in through this town called Pleasant Valley and laid it waste. The town comes back to life 100 years later. And they detour carloads of Yankees 
They're told they're going to be guests of honor for the centennial. Well, we need a guest of honor, and you all are it. <laughs> now, for the next two days, you're all going to be guests of the town. You're going to have the best hotel rooms, the best food, the best entertainment, and it's all on the house. Yes, sir, you all are guests. <laughs> and we're going to show you some Southern hospitality. <laughs> and I'm sure you can imagine just what Southern hospitality means in a Herschel Gordon Lewis film. Listen. 